Hey guys, so welcome to my channel. Now, in today's video, we'll be talking about Laplace transforms. So, if I have a notation, Laplace transforms is just an operator or a transformer that transforms any function, okay, a function in this case. Let's say a function of t. We can use t. All right. Now, if we have if of t, this shows a function of t, okay? So that t is written in terms of the t independent variable. And it could be a polynomial function of t or any function at all, but in terms of t. But the transformation here is that if acts on t to produce, we can define it to be a t plus b, anything, all right? Or just like that. But the Laplace transform transforms a function of a variable. The function of a variable only acts on this variable, but the Laplace transform deals with the whole function, all right? So we will be transforming a function, not just the variable, but rather a function. And when we do that, Laplace transform is given to be the semi-infinite integral, that is to say the integral from zero to infinity, semi-infinite, semi-infinite, you know? It is starting from negative infinity to infinity, that is from the negative, the left to the right, but from the zero point zero, which could be said to be the midpoint, all right, we say semi-infinite integral of e to the negative st, this is the notation for it, times a function of t, dt. That is to say, the Laplace transform of a function of t is given to be the semi-infinite integral, that is an integral starting from zero to infinity of e to negative st times the function of t itself right here, dt. That's it. All right? Great. And take note that when we take the Laplace transform of this, e to the negative st, s right here is just a parameter that we've brought in. And this parameter, note, it is greater than 0, 1. It is greater than 0. Very good. Take note of that. And this parameter, s, is so large, it's said to be so large, so large in that if you're having um, a Laplace transform of, let's say, this, Laplace transform of this, e to the 80, where you need to put e to the 80 right here, you will be having integral, I'm just doing this to illustrate something, why s needs to be very large. We're having e to the negative st times f of t, in here is e to the 80, just like that. Right, so we have times e to the a t dt. Now we are going to add the powers. Remember the product. So we have e to the negative a t plus a t. Okay, so to write this in this form, where t is the coefficient of whatever is here, we are going to have negative of that's e to the power of negative of. Now a and s will be in there, and we have t. Taking note that negative is in front of s, so you're going to have s right here, and positive is in front of a, so you're going to have negative a right here. So we're going to take, this is the same thing as this, so don't mind the closeness. Okay, so we have it like that. What does that mean? s minus a. Now for the integral to converge, taken from 0 to infinity, for it to actually converge, when we take t to be 0, we're going to have 0 here, that's going to be e to the negative of 0, that's just 1 over e to the 0 power, and that's just 1. How about for infinity, okay? When we have t to be equal to infinity, we're having a very large power, though the negative of that. So e to the negative infinity is something I'm saying, 1 over e to power infinity, this is going to be very large, all right? Great. And um, 1 over a very large value, the result is going to be 0. But what happens if s minus a is negative? That's a, that simply means that we're going to have negative times negative, that's going to be positive. And where we're having here to be t, that will be positive infinity. And if you are raising e to the positive infinity power, that is going to be very, very large. It is not a negative power. So it's going to get larger and larger. Therefore, our in integral and our, in our integration will not converge. So for it to actually converge, we need to get negative, all right, in the power or the, the negative exponent. And for that to be possible, s right here should be greater than a. So s should be very large. 
such that it is greater than every other constant a and s should be greater than zero that is the basic idea all right so after knowing that we should also know that um we should also take note that uh the laplace transform of a function of t okay after taking note of, after taking care of this integral sign we're going to have a function of s so the Laplace transform of a function of t is going to give us a function of s. This is very general. All right. Now, what happens if we go for some practical examples? Let's take a particular example. If when the function of t is a constant function, we're going to take the Laplace transform of a constant function, let's say a, constant function of t. Guys, at this point, the power of t is 0. That's the constant function. We have it to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st times, in place of m of t, we just put right there a dt. And here, what do we get? We have a out because it's a product, you know, and we're having a constant function or a constant right here. And um, we can take the constant in the front of the integration sign. We have a times the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative st dt. So we can go ahead and integrate this at the point from 0 to infinity. So we just go ahead and integrate that e to the negative st, that is just e to the negative st over the derivative of right here. You know, if we are given, if you want to make use of the use of, let me explain the integration right now. The integral of e to the negative st dt, I will say, okay, let my st, st become u, okay? Now, I'm going to differentiate with respect to t, so I'm going to have s dt is equals to du. So, in place of dt, I'm going to put dt should become du over s. So, I will just have integral of e to the negative u, like I said, st should be u. Now, in place of dt, I'll just put du over s. So, the integral of negative u, e to the negative u, is just what? You know? I'm just going to take the negative to the bottom, that becomes negative 1 and uh, e to the negative u times 1 over s because you just differentiated that where this s is a constant you can take it to the front anyway it's the same thing or better still you can still say that your negative st should become u so you're going to have negative s is just du so what happens that means that the t is going to be du over negative s so in place of this you can just put u right here and you put this over negative s and that just gives you e to the u over 1 times, it's actually the same thing. That's just negative e to the u over s. Either you use, um, substitute u for negative st, you just substitute u for st. But I think substituting u for negative st is actually easier. But whichever way, you're just going to have over negative s, just like that. Where your u is st, so you're going to do the backward substitution. And you get that. So the integral of this is giving us this. So remember that we're going to take this from the point zero to infinity. And as well, we had our a constant out right like that. So we take from zero to infinity. So we plug in a. We plug in infinity into this. We're going to have e to the negative of a times infinity. Ah. Um, you know this is a constant. We can actually take it out because we are not going to substitute anything for that. We have negative s, so we have it to be this, right? Minus e to the negative s times 0, like that. And what do you get? Well, this is a uh, infinity times s is very large, so e to the negative of a very large value is actually going to become 0 minus s times 0 is just 0. So e raised to the power of negative 0 is just 1 over e raised to the power of 0, and that's just 1. And multiplying it, 0 minus 1 is just negative 1. And negative 1 times this is going to become A over S. So that is to say that the Laplace transform of A is giving us A over S. And good enough, A over S is a function of S, like I said earlier. Okay, so generally, take note of this first. We have where S is greater than 0. And... Uh, s is greater than a so generally when we have any constant at the top 
we have any constant here so the laplace transform of that constant is just going to be that constant over this so you can try for two the laplace transform of two which is a constant function of f of t is just going to be two over s or 10 10 over s and so on the reason why that is so is because you are just going to put your constant right in front of the integration sign and you evaluate the rest all right so we can just go ahead and check for another function of t in this case we're just a constant function situation where we're having an exponential function of t let's say multiplied with any constant value for example we have that f of t should become e to the a t so the laplace transform of this right here okay is just going to become the integral that we used to have of e to the negative h t we just have it like this so where f of t f of t so in this case our f of t is going to be e to the a t so i'm going to put right here e to the a t so we have times e to the a t dt so in the integrand what do we observe we see e to the negative st and we see e to the power at that i was illustrating earlier and i will give that to be integral of e to the negative st plus at dt now we can compute these powers so we have integral of e to negative of s minus a t d t very careful with that no i'm actually having negative s negative s positive a positive a where our t is common all right so if you integrate this like i, I was using the u sub you can actually say let u becomes the negative of all of this all right but integral the integral of this is just going to give you remember ah zero to infinity it is very very necessary zero to infinity it is a semi-infinite integral so we have from we integrate that we have um e to the negative s minus a t the basic idea is that you keep the thing if it is e to the power just keep it like that then you divide it by the derivative of the power with respect to t so that is going to give us respect to t where the t is just to the first power so you're going to get that to be become one so you become negative s minus a so the derivative of t respect to t is just going to give us one like that all right and we're going to take that from point zero to infinity and plugging in infinity right here as usual we're going to have infinity then where s is greater than a we're going to have a very large um negative so we're going to have negative infinity that's just going to be zero okay minus we plug in zero we have zero for t this is zero so e to the power zero is just one so what do we get we have negative of one over a s minus a as the bottom times negative one that's just giving us um one over a s minus a and this is what you get so for any function in this case or for any constant a the laplace transform of that is going to give us one over s minus a a can be two we have one over s minus two one over s minus three depending as the a changes so and take note very important this is a function of s so the laplace transform of a function of t is always given as a function of s you can go ahead and solve for um we can have different examples for example the sine of t the sine function of t the cosine function of t and <laughs>